hit record. Oh, that was close. Okay, hit record. Um, okay, <laughs> I have to repeat myself because I forgot to hit record. So this is Danielle Dame. She is a sugar freedom coach and speaker. She's wonderful. She specializes in the mindset work and so much more. And Dan, will you tell us about what you specialize in and what you're going to lead us through tonight? And I'm really, really excited for it. Yes, absolutely. Um, first of all, thank you, Danny, for having me here and for all of you for showing up live. This is amazing. I am so passionate about um, what we're going to be talking about today. And obviously today, as most of you know, we're going to be really diving in more specifically to limiting beliefs. But there's so many pieces, um, you know, in my work over the last five years in helping women build a healthy relationship with sugar and really create lasting sugar freedom. I really noticed how so many people out there, and I bet some of you could probably relate with this. I know that Danny has told me, you know, in the, in the past that she can relate with this too, um, is really just looking at something like getting off sugar or changing our diet as just about the food, right? Just about like what we're eating and willpowering ourselves to stay off certain things or nourish ourselves in the right way and make these changes. And when I started working with clients, I noticed really quickly that, you know, people could go 30, 60, 90 days without sugar, feel amazing. Something stressful happens and they go right back into old habits and patterns. And that was really, really blaringly obvious for me. And I, I became personally very fascinated with what's going on? Like, what is the root cause? What's actually behind our patterns and our relationship with food? And, and why can't people seem to create lasting change with something like sugar, right? But really, when I say sugar, I mean, this applies to all food, we have a complicated relationship with food. And for most of us, that that relationship obviously starts at childhood, right from our first time we breastfeed, right, right up until and you know, in my search and quest and working with clients and uncovering some of these root causes, it became really, really obvious to me that not only our beliefs, which we're diving in today, but there's a whole gamut of what I call like foundational pieces that if we don't fix the holes in our foundation, we will never really have that freedom when it comes to food or that effortless, peaceful relationship with food that I know so many of us want. So, um, you know, some of those other pieces, being like trauma, you know, really being at the stem of, of how we relate to food and how, you know, our, our world really, um, our emotions, right. Our emotional ability to, um, and when Danny and I were talking about this workshop, we're like, oh, should we do one focused on emotional eating and emotions? Or should we talk about beliefs? So, um, maybe we'll do that another time, but that's a really, really huge piece, right. Learning how to feel again and honor emotions. So we're not numbing out using food to, to escape. And we'll, we'll tie a little bit of that in today, but like I said, today, we're really diving into the limiting beliefs piece. And, um, you know, for, for those of you who've never heard, actually, I would be curious in the chat, does anybody want to take a stab at what are limiting beliefs before I explain it? What in your words, you know, what is a limiting belief? And I'll be tying all this together right now. You might be thinking like, what do beliefs have to do with getting off sugar, right? And getting healthy and changing my diet. Um, I'm gonna pull all that together for you in just a minute. I don't know, I'm gonna I'm typing. I'm gonna wait. Yeah, you're gonna do it. Okay, subconscious beliefs that run our life. Yeah, a belief um, that you can't achieve something. Amazing, awesome. Yeah, absolutely, play along, Danny, of course. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't thank know, you, I'm excited. Fantastic. <laughs> Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, Lori, you're both correct. I mean, there's so many nuances to it and the way that I describe, well, beliefs in general, right. And this is really important before we actually just start talking about limiting beliefs, but you know, the dictionary, whatever dictionary you want to use, um, defines beliefs as something that is accepted or considered to be true. So this is something in our life that we just accept to be truth. Right. Um, but it's funny because it's not actually true. It's, it's really a thought that we continue to choose thinking. Like, so we're choosing this thought to keep thinking it. And what essentially happens, and I kind of love using this analogy, beliefs are, are like glasses, right? And when we are born into whatever culture or religion or society, we start to shape our view of the world through these glasses um, actually, mostly during the first seven years of life, like those are the really sensitive years where we're, we're creating our surroundings, where we're understanding how the world works, what we should do, what we shouldn't do, who we are, what's safe, what isn't safe. 
all of these pieces, you know, are really formed in those first seven years by the influences in our life, the experiences, the traumas, the people, the, the lack of love in our household, like the, the everything around us gets soaked in. And, and through these glasses, we start to understand how the world works. And really, we start to create these stories. I mean, you'll sometimes hear me talking about beliefs and stories in the same way, because sometimes that can be a more helpful way of, of thinking about beliefs is what are, what are the stories that you're telling yourself? Like maybe, for example, about giving up sugar, right? Or doing this program with Danny, right? Like what, what stories are coming up for you around that? And this will make more sense as we get going today. Um, but, you know, I like thinking of those beliefs kind of as those lenses that we see the world through. And when we can start to understand that they are just thoughts that were handed down to us, beliefs that were handed down to us, and they're not always true, right? We actually have a ton of power in changing the way we see the world. We can buy a new pair of glasses if we want to, right? If we are not liking the glasses that we're wearing, that we were raised with, we can buy new glasses and put them on. And this is where we really begin to step into our power and really understand that, um, you know, we have so much control over how we see the world. And this is where that mindset. Is. So when it comes to like limiting beliefs, these are beliefs that, that in my, my own words and definition, hold us back or keep us stuck in our life. So if there's an area of your life that like, you know, cleaning up your diet, right? Eating healthier, right? If there's an area of your life that you want to change, um, these are the beliefs that just like, uh, just like Lori, you were mentioning subconsciously are actually pulling the strings, right? Because our beliefs like through those glasses is how we operate. It's almost like our operating system. So if, you know, if we believe we're lazy, we're going to act lazy, right? We're going to fulfill that sense of identity for ourselves because that's what feels safe and known on the inside. So we're going to continue perpetuating, like I'm lazy. I come home every day and I just sit on the couch and eat food. Right. Um, and we're going to keep telling ourselves I'm lazy, I'm lazy, I'm lazy. And it becomes a piece of your identity, which is a whole nother, uh, other conversation. But this is where these beliefs can really start self-sabotaging us and holding us back. Right. And keeping us stuck, keeping us, um, frozen, right. Keeping us in fear, we have these limiting beliefs in all areas of our lives, right? And today, what we're actually going to be doing is going through a process that you guys have a little cheat sheet of um, on the workbook that I sent out. We're going to be actually taking time today. I'm not just going to be, you know, regurgitating words for all of you to just sit and listen to. You're actually going to be taking action. So if you haven't already, you know, grab your journal or your workbook. Um, or both, you know, because you're probably going to be wanting to write lots of things down as we go. And we're going to be taking time to actually step through this process. And I'll be explaining it as we go. So really, you know, understanding, and again, I just really want to hit this home, right? Really understanding that limiting beliefs are for many of us at the root of our patterns and behaviors around food, right? So if we like, if we believe that we're always gonna be addicted to sugar. If we believe that giving up sugar is hard, if we believe that we're lazy, or we believe that we'll never lose the weight, or we like the endless stories and beliefs that are kind of below and holding us back from making these changes that we want, right? So this is, you know, I hope you're starting to kind of maybe think of some that are maybe coming up for you. And I'll share a list of some of the common ones that, that I see at the root. And how this obviously relates to what we're eating, right? And how things can be difficult or not difficult to, to change in our, in our diet, right? So sugar, right, is a big one. And we have so many beliefs just about sugar as well, right? I mean, even the belief sugar is bad is a belief. And it's, you know, it's, it's something that we've formed from knowledge, obviously listening to Danny and listening to all, obviously there, there is a lot, a lot of that conversation, sugar not being nourishing. Uh, but these are all things that we get to challenge. And when I started realizing this for myself, it was really exciting because, you know, it, when we step into really being empowered and knowing that we have so much control over what goes on up here, we can really begin living the life that we're meant for, right? And the life that, that we want. And instead of coming from a place of victim mentality where we feel like everything's happening to us, right? And we have no control over anything, this is really, you know, the opposite side of that, where we get to, um, you know, really, really 
put our best foot forward, right? And and live life empowered. on our terms. And I know that, yeah, empowered, yeah, yes. yes. And I know, you know, I know a lot of you, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, you're here doing Danny's program, right? That you're, you're wanting to make these changes as well. You're wanting to, to, to balance your body, to feel alive in your body, to love your body again, to really have energy to do all the things that you want to do. I mean, all these reasons, beautiful reasons, heal, maybe some symptoms or some things that are showing up for you are so, so beautiful. And if we don't really dive in and understand what beliefs are holding us back from that goal or from that dream, we'll never stay there, right? This is where, you know, the whole willpower game just doesn't work, right? We can like do great for a while. And I'm so grateful that you're all here with Danny because I know that she's, she's guiding you through all of this in such a beautiful way, but really creating lasting change, we have to dive deep. And sometimes that, that can be really painful, okay? Sometimes some of these truths, and, and I'll be sharing some of these, you know, that might really hit home for you that are quite hard to really wrap your head around, quite hard to really like feel into, but it's really an important part of the journey, okay? Does, does this making sense to everyone? Let me know in the chat or, okay. <laughs> I'm kind of working off two computers so you guys can see like, I'm not at home, I'm on the road actually. Um, so I, I'm glad I kind of figured out the lighting in here, but <laughs> we're making it work. We're making it work. So I just want to make sure that I've covered everything there that I wanted to share. So, yeah, like I said, um, you know, these limiting beliefs, and I find this really, really important as we start having this conversation is to understand where they come from. So as you're listening to me talk right now, even start thinking, you know, where did some of these beliefs come from? for you, right? And like I mentioned earlier, those first seven years tend to be um, the most, you know, important years where we're creating most of our beliefs, but we create beliefs every day, right? Depending on what happens in the world and where we're at. But those first seven years kind of create our core, like our core root beliefs. And then there's parents, our society, our schools, the media is a huge place that we get our beliefs from, right? You know, eating food makes you happy is a belief, right? Like that is something that I know food manufacturers are definitely using in advertisements, right? We actually have a, um, a grocery store here that has a huge billboard and they always have this slogan, eat happy. And it's always a cupcake. And it makes me so angry every time I drive by because it's that kind of messaging, right? That really gets into our bones and our soul and our subconscious that, um, that kind of, ruin our, our health and our life and keep us addicted to sugar, right? I mean, think of, think of any movie where a girl gets dumped by her boyfriend, right? She's always, always, always going to eat ice cream. Like <laughs> I have not seen one, right? She's always going to do that. So there's a lot of those beliefs that come from, from food and uh, or advertising. And I think it's just so important. And I want to empower all of you today. And I hope after um, just a little caveat as well. We're going to be going through lots today, but this is just planting the seed for you after this workshop. And I get this feedback every time you're going to be thinking of limiting beliefs left, right, and center. You're going to be like driving to work and like, oh, there's a new one. I want to write it down. Right. So just, you know, this is just the start for all of you and starting to think about some of these things. And you'll start seeing where, you, you know, being aware of where these are showing up in your life and how they're actually holding you back or controlling you or, um, you know, preventing you from, from where it is that you want to go. So anybody, um, actually, before I share a, a short list, I was going to share with you, I'd love to hear in the chat, any limiting beliefs that are coming up for you right now? Is there anything that you've been able to identify just as I've been talking that, you know, are, are, are really holding you back from some of the amazing things that you want to do for yourself, whether it's in your health, with your health or other areas of your life? I can see all of you typing. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, Myra, I never follow through with anything. Absolutely. That's a belief about yourself, right? About how you function in the world. And a, and a little bit about your identity as well. Sometimes those go together, right? Yeah, Danny, amazing. Yeah, I'm not good at meditating. I'm highly distractible, have trouble focusing, right? One I always told myself too is I, I'm a horrible speller. Actually, my husband and I are in a little getaway and we've been playing Scrabble for the last two days. And I'm like, I know how to spell some words, right? <laughs> like, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank, thank you ladies for sharing. Those are, so those are fantastic. So 
we're going to be obviously going through this a little bit more. So don't worry if nothing's coming to you yet. Oh, Raquel, always mess up something important. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. That's absolutely limiting. Right. And, and can, can you see how, how those, like, if you believe that about yourself and about the world, how that's really going to prevent you, right? Like Raqu Raquel, if you believe you're going to mess something, every important things up, you're probably not going to put yourself out there and try to do important things, right? You're going to hold back. You're going to be like, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. Or you're not going to, you know, really put yourself out there. Right. Or, and, and Danielle, you might just not med not even try meditating because you think you're not good at it. Right. So it's just preventing you from inner peace and, and joy, right. In that way. So yeah. And, and Myra as well, if you don't believe that you ever follow through with anything, you're never going to start anything, right. You're just going to perpetually just say, I can never follow through. So I'm just going to not do anything. Right. And then you're never going to get anywhere, right? If you never put yourself out there. So these are really, really great, really great beliefs. Thank you everyone for sharing. So I wanted to share a really quick list with, with all of you. Some of the really uh, most common limiting beliefs that I've seen getting really to the deep root core for a lot of us, especially us women, uh, when it comes to like our health, I mean, we're just kind of narrowing it in here, but really um, these apply to everything, right? Because when we believe these limiting beliefs, right? It really stems not only in how we relate and use food or sugar, but also in our relationships and our jobs and the way we talk to ourselves and what we do on a daily basis. So if you want to write these down, fantastic. You don't have to, um, but I just want to read these because it can maybe spark for, for you some things. So I'm not worthy, right? I'm not worthy of having the body that I love. I'm not worthy of completing something. I'm not worthy of investing in myself. I'm not worthy of buying organic produce, all these things, right? That I'm not worthy is one of the biggest limiting beliefs that we as women, human beings carry around from childhood. And I have yet to meet somebody who doesn't have this belief. And I, you know, and I've had to work through that myself, right? And really stepping into like believing I am worthy. So this is a big one. And I'm willing to bet like all of you here probably resonate with this. Second to that, very similar. I'm not enough, right? I am not enough. And this is something that, you know, from childhood, a lot of times, you know, we, we get that energetically from our parents or the people that looked after us is, you know, I'm not good enough or I'm not enough. And if we obviously start to feel that, you know, and carry that around in terms of how we show up in the world, we're not going to put ourselves out there. We're not going to feel worthy. We're not going to feel like we're good enough to get off sugar or to join a program like this or to go after that job that we've always wanted or that relationship that, that we want, right? So that enough piece. And the third really, really deep core belief is I'm unlovable, right? I'm unlovable or whatever words come up for you around that. I'm not worthy of love. There's a huge, huge burden a lot of us carry around, you know, especially deeply around love. And unfortunately for most of us, you know, we didn't either receive that energetically or verbally in ways that we needed as children. And we start to kind of create that, that belief that, you know, I'm not lovable, right? My mom doesn't love me or my dad doesn't love me, or, you know, my, my husband doesn't love me. I don't know. Right. Or I'm not, you know, good enough for all of this. So there's kind of this weaving in of not feeling worthy, not feeling like enough, not feeling lovable. Those are the three really, really big pillar limiting beliefs that I feel are, are really, um, at least in my experience over the years, something that everyone I've ever met has dealt with and is working through because they're, they're just so, so cool. Those core limiting beliefs. And um, after those, those limiting beliefs, there's a couple others that are, um, you know, not necessarily core beliefs, but really common ones that I see a lot of. Like it's not safe to express emotions. Okay. So when we're talking about obviously emotions, which is a whole nother workshop for a whole nother day, you know, we need to relearn how to feel, right? We need to know that it's safe and important to feel our emotions or else we're going to continue stuffing them down with food or alcohol or Netflix or whatever tool you, it is you're using to numb out. If we're not feeling like it's safe in our body to, to express emotions. And there might be a whole other gamut of, of beliefs around emotions, right? Like showing emotions means I'm weak or uh, being emotional is a bad thing, right? It's all of this, you know, kind of conversation around like, an, and this is a societal problem, by the way, we're not, uh, we're not taught and, and shown how important it is to be emotional, because that would be inefficient in the workplace. And unfortunately, we live in a world where it's very much like that, like suck it up, right? Don't be too sensitive. Don't cry, you know, be a tough girl. 
um, you know, or whatever language was used in your household growing up. But there is really this, um, you know, conversation of, of and this stigma around actually showing emotions. So that is really, really, really important to start diving into and even even understanding like if nothing else today if you can get some some of those limiting beliefs about your emotional state that'll be really really powerful for you and you can just start with like you know showing emotions is and just hear what comes out right like what shows up for you another limiting belief that i really see is a big one is i'm bad at cooking i'm bad at cooking right and of course if you think you're bad at cooking you're never going to get in the cook kitchen and you're never going to create whole you know real nourishing foods and then you're never going to really you know feel great and and be healthy and eat the foods that you want to eat right cooking is boring is another one maybe you know that was something that you learned from your mother right cooking is a waste of time cooking's boring i mean we were all relatively raised in the, i mean this era over the last you know couple decades right has been really about convenience foods right and that cooking is not important anymore. You have to, to go, right? I don't have enough time to cook. Yeah, absolutely, right? Which really just means cooking is not important because we always have enough time for things that are important to us. So we've got all the time in the world to be on Instagram and Netflix, right? But we don't have time to cook. Yeah, interesting, <laughs> interesting. Um, eating healthy is tasteless, right? That's a big one. Or eating healthy is boring or bland, right? Like all of these kind of beliefs. And then obviously, with sugar, a couple that I mentioned earlier, right? Getting off sugar is hard, right? Or um, I'm never really going to uh, get a hold, get a handle on my sugar dragon. I know that Danny uses that term a lot. Um, you know, these sorts of beliefs around whatever it is that you guys are changing in your diets and, and different, I know she, you know, you're probably doing some other things as well, which is so powerful, but there's beliefs about that, you know, giving up milk, I will not get calcium, right? Like there's, <laughs> there's so many, um, so many of those things that actually aren't fact. And when we can start actually um, questioning them, it starts to take their power away. And, and we get to say, decide, is that a belief that I want to continue thinking? Is it serving me? Or is this belief actually holding me back? And that's kind of the litmus test. It's like, you know, believing that we're confident, beautiful, amazing women, that's probably a belief that you want to hold on to because that's really supportive. And in my opinion, the truth, <laughs> but you know, if there's a, there's a belief showing up for you that is definitely holding you back. Like, you know, I, I can't meditate or I hate cooking, right. Or I don't have time cooking. You can start labeling those and really start understanding like, wait a second, I can change that. Um, another one that I really wanted to point out are our beliefs about failure. And again, this is a workshop um, that I would like a whole other you know, we could spend a couple hours just talking about failure and success and the fears that we have around those, but really um, check in with yourself as well around, you know, what are your beliefs about what it means to fail, right? Like what stories are you telling yourself? Most of us are stuck in the, the old thought pattern of when I fail, it means I'm worthless or when I fail, it means I'm unlovable, right? Or I'm lazy or whatever it is that you're making it mean about yourself, which by the way, is totally a made up belief. And you get to choose a new one if you want. Um, at the same time, many people don't realize this, but we're also afraid of success. So I encourage you to, to, to sit with that as well. You know, oftentimes there's a story coming up for us, story, belief, you know, I, like I said, I use those kind of interchangeably because they can weave together in, you know, when I am successful or when I get off of sugar or when I lose the weight, then I'm going to get unwanted male attention. I'm going to not be able to hang out with my friends for pizza night on Friday. I'm going to, we have a lot of these kind of stories around uh, what it means like to be successful. And one of the ones that I realized for me, and I'll share this just as a personal example, not necessarily around my health, but with success. And this might support in you understanding how, how you're actually afraid of success because most of us are, right? We believe that it's going to change us and change is scary. And then we hold ourselves back. But one that came up for me really big was, um, you know, in growing my practice and my business, I so, so badly wanted to, I want clients, I want to be successful, I want to grow and I want to help, you know, millions of people around the world. But at the same time, I believed that as I got, you know, as I got more clients and as I grew my business, I would have less time for me. And one of my biggest values is freedom and self-care and, and, you know, being able to just have a bath and go for a walk in the middle of the day. And these, these things that, that I really want to create my life. So that was really counterintuitive. You know, I was afraid when I was successful that I was going to lose some of that freedom, right. Or I was going to lose a piece of me or something that was important to me. 
which was total BS. When I labeled it, I was like, wait a second, that is such a lie. And I got to call myself out on that and start to, to shift that using this process that I'm going to share with all of you. Is this, is this making sense so far? I want to make sure we're sort of all on the same page. Any questions so far? I mean, feel free to unmute or post in the chat. Um, Cause the next part, we're going to get into some actual journaling and act action taking, which I'm all about taking action. Cause that's how we, we start to see shift. And I'm going to walk you all through the process, but I just want to check in with everybody. Anything, and anybody want to share anything that's coming up for them as well. That's, that's more than welcome. Yeah, and I love everything you're saying. And I feel, um, I hear a lot of these things in what people come to the program. They're like, I've never been successful before. I always stay on the wagon and then I always fall off. And I've, you know, had my own issues with that in the past. And um, I love that you're talking about taking action because everyone here in this course is like, oh yeah, yeah we're here to take action. So I love that uh, we're on the same page. We have a we have the same business coach, <laughs> so <laughs> we really make sure that <laughs> that um, we're getting our students to take action. Because if you're not taking action, nothing changes, right? If nothing changes, nothing changes. So thank you for um, even just sharing all those ideas of beliefs. They were really helpful to sort of like stir some up. It's like, oh yeah, I've thought of that, and those core ones, they're really down there. They're really like they're, they're so deep. yeah, they're not overt like I've never thought like I'm unlovable I haven't thought that but yeah. it's like it's when you go through that process of like oh yeah I guess I feel like oh I'm, I'm not good enough and it's like I'm I'm easy to reject and I guess I'm not yeah the not good enough like they're down there so yeah. it takes some steps of thinking to really uncover them so I'm excited to continue yeah yeah, yeah and a great a great sort of not litmus test but a great place to look first is your relationship with your mother <laughs> look at your relationship with your mother, if, if she's still around or the past or whoever it was, the woman that raised you, we have so much complexity from, especially in childhood. Like I've been doing a lot of work over the last couple of years with just my relationship with my mom and learning so much about how, you know, where she triggers me being my work. Right. And, and what are the wounds there for me, you know, and not being accepted by her and, and feeling criticized and, all those things. And how has that actually shaped my beliefs, right? About myself, right? Like, oh, I'm not good enough, right? Because she's always criticizing me, which is very much what my mom does. So, you know, like, okay, very easy to understand where that came from for me. Mm. And now I get to choose to shift that, right? Because it's total BS and we can start calling ourselves out on that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Does anyone else want to share anything? Feel free to unmute yourself. Ira, I'm loving your little fur fur baby in the video too. Yes, I, I wish I had mine. <laughs> Danny, where are your fur babies? We should have brought them they're to the call. They're <laughs> surprisingly not in here. They're all all three of them are always in here, but um, yeah. I think they're yeah. They're I left them out. <laughs> it's a miracle. Yeah, yeah. They're too distracting sometimes. I get it. I get it. Walking across. The okay. Screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's let's move on then. Actually, and before we do, I think this might be supportive as well. This is I just want to share an example. I love sharing this example because it's something recent that I went through in really the power that we do have that I keep talking about um, in choosing new beliefs, right? And how that actually affects your emotional state, your body, your life um, going forward. So um, noticed. Oh yeah. Yeah, Raquel, exactly. And we, we do that because it's like, it's what we believe to be true. So then we, we like, it's the self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Like we continue operating from that operating system. And for a lot of us, and I'm glad that you mentioned that Raquel, because it's like, it feels like it's just truth. Like sometimes we don't even think that we're operating from a belief when we make a decision or we say something to someone and it just seems like truth. It's like, well, obviously, you know, the, the world is flat, right? Like it just feels like we are, are round. <laughs> we used to think it was flat, right? These things just feel like truth until we realize they're not, right? And we could start to really call them out and shine the light on them and bring awareness to them. And this is, you know, such an empowering thing to do because we can start to realize, wait a second, that's not truth. It's just something that somebody at one point told me to believe and I took it on as truth. And um, we can challenge those at any time. And it, it's actually really fun. Like, I love doing that. I love calling myself out on uh, limiting beliefs. And I actually just worked through one over the last couple of weeks. I know Danny knows a little bit more about this. Um, 
something that I've been a big decision that I've had to make in my life. And I realized the exact limiting belief that was holding me back from making that decision. And um, I labeled it and I went through this process and it took me, you know, a good couple of weeks and I worked through it, cleared it and just made that decision that I needed to make. And it felt so incredible. But the story that I wanted to share with you is just uh, about moving. Okay. What comes up for you? I'd love to hear in the chat when I talk about moving. If I tell you that I have to move next month, I know Danny's going to have some beliefs about this too. <laughs> what comes up for you? Yeah, okay. So That's I hate my moving. belief. I hate moving. It's expensive. What else? Like moving is, yeah, like moving is expensive. What else? I'll let other people yep. answer. Yeah. Yeah. Danny is like, I've I got have, a list of oh, I have a big list. Yeah, what's up to <laughs> Moving is Lori said overwhelming. I think Lori's messages are just coming to me, but Lori said overwhelming. Oh, okay. And she said overwhelming. Um, yeah. Yep. Great. Expensive, overwhelming, stressful, mayhem, craziness, right? These are the the like collective beliefs about moving, what it means to move, right? Uh, about actually, it's been over a year now. My husband and I had to move. We, um, our landlords were moving into the house that we lived in. So it was a surprise. We had to move out. And I definitely had a big pity party. I was like, this is horrible. We're going to, it's going to be horrible. And we're not going to find a place and all the beliefs. Right. And I started noticing because I'm so aware of this, that when I was telling people about having to move, everybody we told kind of replied with, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. That's so stressful. And I realized that I was taking on that belief. And I believe that as well, like moving is stressful, moving is overwhelming, right? Like Lori said, or, or expensive or all these things. And I realized like, I, I just observed myself verbally saying these things to other people, getting that reflected back to me from them. And, and then telling myself that tape on repeat daily on a daily basis, and as soon as I realized this, it took me kind of a couple of days to realize that that's what I was doing. And it, it was a belief, not a truth. And I actually decided to play a little game where what if um, my husband's name is Ben? What if we choose to believe something else? And we actually play with the power of our mind here. What if, what if moving was fun? What if moving was effortless and joyous and an adventure? Like some words that actually brought great emotions in our body. We're like, let's, let's try this hat on, these glasses on, right, for size and repeat this tape to ourselves on a daily basis. So that's, that's what we did. We actually, we consciously chose to, whenever we caught ourselves, because you, you're never perfect at it right away. We, I caught myself saying, oh, this is going to be so stressful. And I went, wait a second. No, nope. moving is going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be an adventure. And it's all going to work out, you know, all these, all these really positive beliefs that I wanted to, to choose around moving. And um, I, you guys can probably guess where this story ends up, but we had a blast. Like we ended up having a blast moving. We took our time. We, you know, made lunch for the road and like that, played some fun music. And like, we really brought an energy of like, this is, this is going to be an adventure and this is going to be fun. And it was, it, it all unfolded exactly that way. Right. This also kind of steps on like the, the law of attraction and manifestation and, and, you know, all of those kind of universal laws as well, that what we think about, we bring about. So th that was just a simple example of like consciously me actually choosing and deciding like moving was actually going to be fun. And it, it, it was, it was really cool to see that. That was one of the first times that I really like tested out this, like, I'm going to try this on and see how this this feels and obviously it felt incredible right and it was it was a really fun experience so i just wanted to share that that's kind of an example of how we can choose these things so now i want to get to it here i know i've been talking for a lot but i want to again we're let's let's start taking some action okay so what i want all of you to do you don't need your workbook but it is there outlined for you um, grab your journal whatever you want and i'm gonna put on some music Okay, while we do this, because I'm going to give you all a couple minutes for each of these questions we're going to walk through. Okay, we're going to walk through this step by step process because now that you understand, you know, there's some limiting beliefs floating around in my subconscious that are holding me back. The obvious question is, well, how do I change them, right? Like, how do we make moving fun? How do we actually change those neural pathways and change the way that we think and see the world and buy new glasses, right? Put our new belief glasses on. So, how we do that is 
uh, exactly what we're going to kind of work through here. And this is this is a process that you'll you can use going forward and you will use going forward um, in terms of really getting clear on the new belief, you know, the old belief, the new belief, and then making it stick. Okay, and 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 make creating those neuro neuro neural pathways. So step one, okay. And this is where I'm going to throw this out to all of you and I'm going to give you some time to write what comes out. Step one is to identify and bring awareness to the limiting beliefs that are currently showing up for you. So you can do this specific to health or emotions or getting off sugar, or you can do this for all areas of your life. And you're going to right now take some time to brainstorm. So I want you all taking your journal or your workbook out and write down all of the limiting beliefs that are coming up for you as I'm, as I've been talking or as you're thinking about um, this journey that you're on and some prompts that, that might support you are um, like being healthy is, you know, just ask yourself that question and see what comes, what comes to you, right? Getting off sugar is losing weight is right. Changing my diet or learning to cook is, you know, these sorts of things can really prompt like the belief underneath there for you. And then we'll go from there. Okay. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes. I'm going to set a timer. I'm going to put some music on and, um, and, and then we'll, we'll reconvene. So get brainstorming. Let me share my audio. Can you guys hear that? Mm -hmm. okay. This song is called, I believe, by the way, it's so perfect. I'm a lover. I was born this way I'm a warrior and I will make a change hope you're ready for what I'm about to say you are love yeah, and you are brave so come with me take a jump into this ocean set your heart free throw the change into motion we can live in peace we can say the war is over and now you will come to see that we will make a difference i believe we will make a difference i'm a baba i sing to mahadev i come to bring the truth to those who cannot see don't be led astray into unrighteous ways go back in he said inside your holy gate and come with me take a jump into this ocean and now set your heart free throw the change into motion yeah. we can live in peace we can say the war is over and now you will come to we will make a difference i believe difference I believe we will make a difference whoa yeah we're going down 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 whoa yeah we're going down 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 whoa yeah we're going down 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 whoa we're going down 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 into the of love. So come with me, take a jump into this ocean and now set your heart free. Throw the chain. Give you about another minute. Keep writing. Brainstorming. Don't hold back. There's no wrong answers. We will make a difference, I believe. We will make a difference, I believe. We will make a difference, I know. Keep writing if you're feeling the flow continue coming. Obviously, you can continue this list later. Obviously, more will come to you over the coming weeks and months as your awareness expands around 
how you're operating in the world and what you're saying to people, which is obviously one of the, for me anyway, it's one of the best places that I can start identifying the limiting beliefs is where am I being negative, right? Or where am I, what am I saying to other people about certain things in my life, right? What words are coming out of my mouth? I mean, also what words are people telling me, right? Because then we can start to say, is that a belief that I also believe that they're putting on me, you know, and it can be a, a great kind of cue for inquiring, you know, if that's something that resonates for you or not. I Would anybody find, like to? Oh, I just yeah, want to ahead. share quickly that um, oftentimes if I say uh, eliminating what I feel is fact, <laughs> um, oftentimes people who are close to us will be like, no, whatever. Like, so they'll like, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm this or that. And they're like, no, you're not. But it's like, you feel like you are. Those are often other times <laughs> those yeah. beliefs popping out. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a really great one. Yeah. Would anybody like to either on mute or in the chat, share some of the ones that were coming up for you? This is obviously a very safe space to be open and yeah, yeah, just unmute. Go ahead, Lori. Um, I've started catching myself as I'm saying the statement um, and stopping myself and then relanguaging it. So I find myself constantly saying, I'm so stressed, I'm so stressed, I'm so stressed. So I know the more I say that, the more I'm reinforcing that belief and then the I'm like really digging that groove deeply, that neural network pathway. So I'll stop right when I'm doing it and say, yeah. my life is easy and perfect. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> or something so like that. And then laugh about it. So I sort of celebrate it. And I, I'll even be on the phone with somebody and start to say, I'm so stressed. And then I'll say, I love my life. It's so easy. And they're like, huh? <laughs> and I'm like, I was going to say I'm stressed, but I'm really not. Um, or also I hear myself saying I'm so overwhelmed. Um, I'm terrible with the computer and technology. Like, I don't want to continue to reinforce those things. So I didn't used to hear it when it would come out of my mouth. So I hear it now. That's great. Amazing. Beautiful awareness. That, that's so, so powerful. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Myra, did you want to share as well? I saw you on mute. Yeah, I have a few. Um, I think some that are big for me um, is that I often feel like helping and supporting others is more important than the things I need to do for myself. And 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 I feel selfish like when I tell the girls, I'm sorry, I, I can't do girls night. I have to, you know, if I would say I have to stay home and cook, They'd be like, ah, oh, you can do that. And I'm, no, I can't do that another day. I'm going to be working all day. Um, so that's a really big one for me. And then another big one is that some belief that the universe is not working in my favor. So things are not going to work out the way I want them. Yeah. And that the odds are stacked against me. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are deep. Those are big ones. Thank you for sharing. Um, I know you're not alone in that. You know, I've heard a lot of that. And there's, there's almost like this, right? This belief that other people's needs are more important than mine. Right? Yeah. Like that's what comes right. up for me there, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. also the belief that being selfish is a bad thing. That's a belief. That's not a fact, mm-hmm. right? And I know yeah. um, I personally had to work through that one as well. Like we have the societal belief that like there's something wrong with us if we put ourselves first. And I want to call bullshit on this for all of us right now, because it is like the most important empowering thing to actually be now when people like if someone ever calls me selfish I'm like thank you <laughs> like mm-hmm. I do put myself first right and I used to that used to be a big trigger for me because it's so painful to for people to like say those things to us so just know that, that there's a way through that and, and labeling that is is really is really huge so thank you for for sharing that yeah Myra I actually um, just signed up for a codependency course because of that very reason about yeah putting people before ourselves and it, the primary yeah. focus is the self-care piece and like tapping into yeah. our needs and setting boundaries. So you're not alone yeah. and it's really hard and it's hard to just will yourself to be different. So um, yeah. the awareness is the first piece and thank you for being vulnerable yeah. and sharing all that. Yeah. 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 And also just what's coming up for me, total side tangent to, as you were sharing that Myra is, is like choosing other language around that as well. Like 
instead of I need to cook tonight, it's, hey, I'm choosing to stay home tonight to cook nourishing food so that I can eat healthy all week, right? And and maybe, I mean, there's a whole nother conversation, obviously, around how to communicate that better and, and, and stand in that boundary, right? That you're setting, say, with your friends in that example. Um, but it's so important, right? To just say, like, I'm choosing, I think that's such a more empowering word instead of I need to or I have to. Um, those are, or, or I'm trying to, like these sort of limiting kind of language that we use around ourselves. It's almost like we're punishing ourselves for staying home versus, you know, being empowered. And I'm choosing to stay home and hang out with myself and rest and cook and set myself up for an amazing week, you know, today instead of going out with friends. Um, those sorts of things, right? And our language, I, I get to, so, so important. I get, I get to, to. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Did you want to share a hey. Yeah, we get to, good to see you. <laughs> um, so I actually agree with both of them because I find myself saying all the time, I'm so stressed out. Like that's my phrase that I use probably like 20 times a day. And, um, and then also the same with the people pleasing. It's the same situation with me. I actually feel like my friends and I have like shifted apart because now I have a baby and then my other friend, not married, doesn't have kids or we're not on the same page. And then I have uh, my other friend who has a baby, but she loves to party. <laughs> so, so it's like, I, and then I'm always the one saying, oh, I'm going to stay home. I'm going to stay home. And then, um, you know, it's just that constant feel like I need to people please is, you know, it's, and it's also kind of drives my limiting beliefs as well. Cause I feel like I have to please them or I have to show up. Um, right. But, or if you don't show up, you're a bad friend, right? Exactly. Or whatever the book. Yeah. yeah. And that's exactly how, in a way they make me feel because mm -hmm. they're so used to being together every weekend. Whereas like, I'm like showing up like once in a blue moon. Um, and especially with all my health issues, you know, with the sugar, like it kind of makes you a little bit reclusive. Like I didn't feel good to even go out. So, um, so I have that, uh, I, definitely the stress is number one for me and the people pleasing. And also like, I don't know, like when my sugar issues started, which was a few years ago, I also was planning for a wedding and everything just kind of collided. And um, I had a lot of limiting beliefs like during my wedding, like it's not going to come out great. Like it's, um, you know, I'm going to mess, mess it up. Like it's, anything that's important, I always feel like I'm going to mess things up. So those are kind of the constant limiting beliefs I've been telling myself for like the past five years, I want to say. Yeah. yeah. Powerful. Yes. And you're identifying them, right? All of you just, you know, really bringing that awareness is, is so powerful. So thank you, Raquel, for, for sharing. Those are, yeah, really, really powerful and beautiful to hear, you know, like sometimes when we speak these things out loud, we can, we can start to see how silly they are and, and work through them as well. Right. Which is, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you just have different priorities right now and different needs, like as an individual human, because you need something different than your friends right now, I think is incredible. Right. And honoring like I don't need to be out partying. I need to be at home resting, right? And that's what I need right now. And that's self-love. Like that's me putting myself first. And and it in the world that we live in now, it is like it's it's really difficult to kind of stand up and be that person, right? That's that's just being selfish, right? Like putting yourself first and, and not taking on other people's like projections or opinions or I know this is all like very deep, very like it takes time to figure all that out, but it's so empowering. I encourage all of you to, you know, keep, keep, you know, working on that and keep playing with that and really own, owning. I think the more we, especially on this journey with getting off of sugar, right? The more we can really own who we are and really feel confident. Like a lot of, a lot of times things trigger us or other people trigger us because we don't feel confident in our choices, right? We feel like, Ooh, am I a bad friend? Am I being lazy? Should I not be off sugar? Like we are second guessing ourselves. And then when people project that it hurts, right? That's the trigger part. So as we get more confident and in our own bodies and who we are and really owning our like love and empowerment for ourselves, those sorts of things stop worrying you, right? Like those sorts of things fall away. And I speak from personal experience with this. Like the more I step into like, I know who I am and I know what I need. Nobody can guilt me into anything anymore. Like, nope, I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> like, you know, and, and that's taken years and I'm still like working on it, but it's, it's so empowering. So I sending all of that to all of you. 
Okay, so let's let's move on to step two. Okay, um, thank you everyone for sharing, and hello to Sean who's just joining in. Um, we're just going on to step two, and what happens here is obviously please continue brainstorming any other beliefs that are coming up for you. And once you really get going with this, you'll get like 30, 40, 50, 60, like the, the beliefs are endless, in, especially the limiting ones in all areas of life. So please come back to this at another time and go through this again. But for the purposes of today and this process that I'm guiding you through, the next step is just to pick one. Okay, pick one of those beliefs that you feel right now in what you're working on in this program with Danny or other areas is really going to make the biggest impact to change. I know that's that's hard, but we just need to hone in on one and kind of work through from there. So I'll give you just a minute to to figure that out. Trust your intuition. What one pops out on the page for you? Okay, do you have it chosen? Give me a thumbs up or something. Okay, yeah, Myra's ready, Raquel. And Sean, if you're just joining us, just pick a limiting belief <laughs> that you wanna work through today and wanna change. Okay. So now that you've got that, we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, you've got that one belief that you're like, okay, this is the one I want to work through today. And, and like I said, you, you're going to go and use this process for all the other beliefs that you want to change, but I just want to teach you what you can do uh, to work through this. So the next step, and I'm going to give you a couple of minutes, put some music on for this one, is what is the benefit I'm getting from holding on to this belief? Okay, you'll see that in the workbook and I'll, I'll repeat that again. What is the benefit I'm getting from holding on to this belief? I feel so called out immediately by you saying that. I love it. I'm okay, so what, what's coming up for you? Well, I put that I'm not a good meditator and the benefit I get is that I'm like, oh, I'm not good at this and then I don't have to do it. <gasps> ah, you get to avoid avoid doing it, right? oh, which is a benefit. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. And you probably get something to like commiserate about with someone, right? Or like some sort of sense of something, right? Like there's there's... As silly as it is, I mean, even with beliefs like I'm not enough or I'm unlovable, there's a benefit that we're getting or else we wouldn't continue believing it, right? We either get a benefit, maybe it's emotionally or we get to avoid responsibility or we get to um, like commiserate with someone because all of our friends have the same belief. We get to feel like we're part of a, a club because everybody that I know hates cooking or, you know, there's there's something in that. So spend a couple of minutes just just feeling into what comes up for you around that. What are the possible benefits um, in that for you? I'll put on some more music. You've been through so much, so many ups and downs. You've given your love, but never like the way it turned out. You closed off your heart and you carry the weight like a million rocks on your shoulders But you don't have to wait for an apology Or for someone else to make amends When you can remember That your healing is in your hands Just let it go Just let it go and do it again. Just let it go. One day you'll see. Just let it go. You set yourself free. You've been used. You've been abused. Someone came along who didn't value you. You carried the way. shoulders but life isn't meant to be perfect and we won't always win but can you remember that your healing is in your hands 
just let it go inch by inch just let it go and do it again just let it go one day you'll see just let it go you set yourself Gave it your all, you put your blinders on when you looked around, all of your friends were gone, you took the fall, and you carry the weight like a million rocks on your shoulder, just let it go. I know there's so much pouring out of you. That's beautiful. Thank you, Myra, for asking for the songs. Um, I just posted the one I was just playing um, in the chat. And I'm also happy to share, um, I actually have a playlist that is my like, it's called Connect to Love. It's like my co personal collection of all my favorite, really deeply moving and beautiful songs that um, I really connect a lot with music. <laughs> so I'm happy to share that with all of you on Spotify. I'll send it to Danny and she can share it with all of you another time. Um, I realized that I just uh, mixed up steps three and four, which is totally fine. So what you guys did was just step four, which is great <laughs> and and keep that brainstorm going. But if you're if you're done, uh, we'll just back up to step three as some of you are like, what's going on in the workbook? She skipped a step. Um, I just mixed them up on my screen. So um, step three, uh, next next question is to reflect on where that belief came from. So where did that belief come from? for you you know that it's boring to cook or you know that giving up sugar is really difficult whatever it is um you know that we should put other people first before ourselves right like where did that come from for you was it a person was it a situation was it society was it that one time where you were in front of the school class and everybody laughed at you because you made a spelling mistake or you know what is maybe maybe it's a certain situation or the energy of your household growing up or something your mom said to you or something you've seen in the movies you know all those sorts of things so um really just take a take a minute or two reflecting on those where did that one belief that you're working with today come from for you and i'll finish this song while we do that Okay, it looks like you're all still writing. So I'll put another song. I'll give you another 30 seconds or so.
All right, how's everybody doing? I know we're kind of breezing through things today, but uh, you'll have plenty of time going forward to go back through this. And I really encourage you all to do that. I know I've said that a few times, but you'll get something more will come to you once you go through this again, even with this belief that, that you're hashing through today, um, you know, reflecting on it every couple of days over the next couple of weeks, like you'll more will come to you um in your sleep you know when you're driving you know usually when you're on like autopilot like those those downloads start coming you're like oh that's where that came from or that's one of the benefits i'm getting from this right and this is all just really about understanding um you know what's going on for you and bringing this deep awareness to this belief so step five okay question five is now understanding and we did the benefit what benefit are you getting from this belief now and i know this this can sometimes be the most painful part because what i actually want you to do is to connect with the pain and i want you to ask yourself what is it costing me to continue holding on to this belief what is this costing me in my life in my relationships in my body in my mind anything that's coming up for you what is it costing me to continue holding on to this belief the mistakes that I have made or any of the things that cause me pain. I am not the pieces of the dream I left behind. How's everybody doing? Do you need another another minute or two? Yes, no. I'm okay. <laughs> You're good. Okay, I see Myra still writing. We'll give you another a little bit. I think first and foremost we have to darn ads. <laughs> I was just gonna say that sounds like an ad. <laughs> Wow. 
power of you me is here to create magic on earth the power of love is here now the power of now is here now the power of you me is here to create magic on earth okay I would love to hear if anybody is open to sharing uh, the last two questions. You know, what is the benefit that you're getting from this belief and what's it costing you? And I think this is such a beautiful safe space to really open up and, and, and get honest with ourselves, right? I, I think this is a big part of the process is really being honest and raw with ourselves and what's really going on. So what's the benefit that you were getting? Would you write it down? And what is it costing you? Um, the one benefit I wrote down about believing that the universe is not working in my favor is it keeps me living my comfortable life and I don't have to put myself out there um, and that I can avoid failure. Um, but what it's costing me is, I wrote a lot of things here, but um, maybe some of the main ones, um, it's keeping me from building the life I dream of having. And then it makes me kind of bitter toward those that are creating what they want, which is really dumb because they're doing what I wish I would be doing. Um, it costs me adventure and it also costs me the belief and confidence in myself and that I really have what it takes. You made wow. me cry. Wow. <laughs> that was so good. How does that feel acknowledging that, like feeling into those things that you just shared? It feels really good. Feels good. Yeah. All the costs, yeah. those costs that you just mentioned. Oh no, the costs don't feel good, but like just yeah, recognize. He's dying. <laughs> he's dying. Like, Doesn't feel good. It, it, no, it but it's it's raw. It's it's real. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. It feels good to acknowledge that, right? Like yeah. it feels really great to to put that on paper and to say and, and to now look at that and and realize that that's not truth. And yeah. you get to choose a different way, a different belief, a, di a different way of operating just so powerful yeah thank you for sharing that and you know like the, the the benefit of right like and I really want all of you you know whether or not you feel safe to do that here or you know after I do want you to really connect with like you know looking at those costs right like what is what is this robbing you of like these beliefs that you're choosing to continue thinking on autopilot like it hurts you know, it's painful. It's, and, and it's not something to be afraid of that emotion and that rawness. And thank you, Myra, for being so open to sharing that, you know, is, is so um, important in, in creating change, right? Because if we don't see that the cost is worse than the benefit, we will never change, right? So we have to rebalance, right? Is that cost painful enough for me to want to change, right? For me to want to choose another way and put in the work to do that. So that's why it's so important to connect with that pain. And I encourage you all to continue writing down some pieces. You know, what is this robbing me of? My joy, my happiness, new friendships, adventures, right? Like, you know, really feeling alive in my body, you know, all of these am amazing things, right? Really connecting with that pain and not being afraid of feeling that pain because that can be such a powerful catalyst in, in driving your change going forward, if that makes sense. Yeah. So good. Thanks, Myra. Dan, I have yeah, a question. Does anyone else want to share? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. yeah I have a question. So um, I'm doing one for like meditating because that's, the, it's just on my mind, but I wanted to also kind of, you know, like the, I'm so stressed, which Lori brought up. I'm like, oh God, I say that all the time. Like, and I hear, you know, yeah. people in the group saying that all the time. And yeah. I catch myself saying that and I, I am starting to realize like, Hey, that's not something I want to say because I don't want to keep bringing that about. Right. But I'm having trouble coming up with the benefit and the cost. So I don't know, like one of the things I put was just, <laughs> is it an excuse for poor performance? Like, oh, I'm so stressed. Like, I don't, I don't know. I'm not seeing 
I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble connecting. Yeah, thank you for asking that. That's that's such an important uh, question. So thanks, thanks, mm -hmm. Annie, for that. Uh, there's kind of two things. Number one that are coming up for me. Number one is like I'm so stressed isn't the root belief. So there's there's probably some questioning that okay. you could dive into below that to find the real belief. Oh, so, yeah, it's not a belief. It's well, it could be, yeah. but okay. it's but it's also like you know, uh, when I have too much on my plate, then, you know, it means X, Y, Z about me, or, you know, what, what is like, what is the story underneath being stressed? Also, maybe being stressed is a bad thing, right? Like that's a belief that's going on there, right? Like being stressed mm -hmm. is bad because you're always mm -hmm. complaining about it, right? That kind of is bringing that energy maybe. Okay. So there might be another way to word it that might prompt you to kind of dive deeper into it. Mm -hmm. Um, and if not, I mean, I am, you know, yeah, I I'm always stressed might be your belief, right? That might be just the way that you operate. And one of the benefits that, cause I can very much relate to that, mm -hmm. um, is, is like feeling a part of something because every single person in our society complains about being stressed. Mm -hmm. So we feel like we're connected, right? Mm -hmm. So what's really going on there is I feel connected to the people around me because we're commiserating together right? Because they're saying they're stressed. Mm -hmm. I'm saying I'm stressed. And then it also is helping me like a, for a lot of us, this sense of like being busy all the time makes us feel important. Yeah. I was, that's right. what I Our just got to. Yeah. And I'm like, this is yeah. this identity where we like hook ourselves to a human doing. Yeah. And that comes from that root belief that you said at the beginning, yeah. like I'm not enough, but for me, it's almost like yeah. I feel that I was loved conditionally. So it's like, I have to prove yeah. myself. So I think it's coming into, it's sort of taking that, like if yeah. I'm not doing enough, then I'm not worth enough. So, okay. So yes. dig deeper if you can't find Beautiful. it. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Cool. Thanks, I love this awareness. Yeah. There's so much mm -hmm. around that, right? This, this yeah. propensity, and we could do a whole nother class on this, right? About mm -hmm. being human beings, not doing this, right? But yeah. we, we idolize being busy. Yeah. And being stressed, which is why society, it's so hard for me to meditate. <laughs> if I'm stressed and busy, it means I'm successful, right? Like yeah. these are beliefs that our society imposes on us. Like when mm -hmm. I'm always running around with my head cut off, not only do I feel like part of the crowd because everybody's doing this and it's the new cool thing yeah. um, versus, and also like it, it makes us feel important, right? Like, mm -hmm. and especially, I know, I know I can relate with this too, Denny, as an mm -hmm. entrepreneur, right? We're starting our own businesses and it's like, I, I'm so busy and it kind of means I'm successful, right? Like it's almost that like, I've got so much going on. And I know mm -hmm. our, our business mentor, right? Always kind of challenges us, uh, us on that, right? It's like, um, mm -hmm. are you, or is busy the new stupid? And I mm -hmm. love that saying he always says, right? Busy <laughs> is the new stupid because it means you're not effectively using your time, right? And you're not yeah. valuing yourself right. um, in a powerful way. But I think, yeah, there might be something there. Obviously you're, 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 you're getting to it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Thank you for asking that. Mm -hmm. Did anybody else want to share quickly those two before we move on to the exciting part? I'm going to shift our energy a little bit into empowerment. <laughs> Sorry, my, my dog's in the background. So like, I want to say something, but they keep barking. That's um, okay. Well, we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> we can still understand you. <laughs> Um, honestly, I couldn't think of not even one benefit that my limiting belief was even making my life better, or there's just no benefit from it, holding on to it at all. And I can tell you, I've been struggling with this limiting belief, I think for a very long time. I think I, I want to know it's embarrassing, but I want to say like even like 20 years, I would even say. Um, and it's been it's costing me everything. It's costing me like pretty much even my health because when I get, you know, like really um, nervous or there's always somebody, <laughs> there's always something going on in my house. Sorry. <laughs> That's why like, I like put the video off because there's always somebody walking in or the baby or okay. dog. Um, but anyway, um, it's literally like costing my life. It really is because it affected my health. Um, I think it's the root cause of like, whenever I felt you know, like uh, incapable of doing something or like really stressed out, I'll just like run and grab a piece of chocolate. And I think that's when like all like 
the sugar issue really stemmed from. And it's also preventing me from achieving goals that I want for myself. Like it, at this age, I pictured myself doing different things. And also like, I feel like I've, even when it comes to like work, let's say, like I'm just doing a job that I did love at one point and I kind of outgrew, but this is not where I envision myself at this stage in my life in this position. And, you know, it's costing me also like my family in a way because I don't really have time for them. And I, and I try my hardest to put all my energy and efforts to them. And, you know, and, and my sanity, I feel. <laughs> yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Raquel, thank you so much for sharing that. Can I, um, I, I can't remember if you shared which one you were diving into today. Are you open to sharing which belief it is? Yes, I am. I actually started to write things like I'm stressed and all this. And then I realized like the root cause of it is that I feel like a failure sometimes and that I'll always mess up like something important. And I feel like that's the root cause of, or that let me believe like the root of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful. I'm so glad you chose that one. That is a, that is a very big, like big root one. And, and obviously intuitively you knew that for yourself today. Um, are you open to some, some ideas around possible benefits? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like I did with Danny. Cause I'm like, ah, oh, there's always a benefit. You're saying you couldn't see it. I'm like, no, 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 we'll find one. <laughs> um, so what if, and, and this might not at all be for you. Right. But I'm just, just think off the top of my head, you know, when it comes to like, fear of failure, right? And believing like the belief being like, you know, I'm, I always fail at things, right? right? The benefit could be that you don't have to ever start anything, right? That you get to, that you get to just coast, that you get to stay in your comfort zone. You get to stay in your little safety bubble and you don't actually have to put yourself out there or be rejected or um, be hurt or let down. Does any of that yeah. resonate? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So those are benefits. Those are like the psychological benefits that you're getting from like staying small, right? You, if you're afraid of failure, you never have to put yourself out there. You get to just stay over here, but you also never get to experience the fullness of life and all these other amazing things that you want. Right. Um, but those are, you know, just to get the ball rolling, it sounds like those are some of the, some of the benefits that you could write down there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> you're, on you're on it. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and, and just more will come to you as I keep saying, right, as we go. Okay, let's move on. We, we might go a little bit over. I don't know if Danny, you know, kind of prompted you for around 90 minutes, but we're definitely going to go a little bit over because I want to spend time with, with all of you doing this. And I know that some of you are watching the recording. So we're going to shift gears now, right? I've just had you kind of do some work really understanding this current limiting belief. And now what we're going to do is choose a new belief, a new empowering belief. So looking at that belief that you just wrote down and you've been working with, what is the opposite of it? Or what, how can you rewrite that belief to actually be an empowering new belief that you want to rewire, right? That you want to wire on top of that old one. So the old one goes away. So if it's, you know, I, I always fail at things. It could be failure is a gift and I'm always learning, right? I mean, there's so many beautiful like ways of reshaping the, uh, failure, but, or I'm always on the path of growth, right? Or when I fail, it means I'm growing, right? That is one of my, like, one of my beliefs about failure, right? Or, you know, I love med meditating in my own way or, you know, things like that, right? So for you in your own words, obviously find something that resonates with you. What is a new belief you'd rather believe that, um, that, that feels good in your body, that inspires you, that motivates you. So I'll give you a couple minutes to, to brainstorm that. And you might not get it right away. I mean, write down a few and play with it and sit with it and sleep on it and all those things over the coming weeks. But, um, you know, just see what comes up for you now. So Myra, I don't know if you heard that. We're just writing down our new empowering belief. Okay, you heard it. Okay.
Let the fire burn away our fears. Let the wind blow into your life. Such faith and trust. Oh, let the earth hold you, take care of you, nurture you. I want to mention one more thing as you're writing your new empowering belief that a reminder, it still needs to be true. So it needs to feel true in your body, whatever that new, new belief is. So you can't go from, you know, I'm overweight to I'm thin and sexy, right? Because your subconscious knows that that's not really true right now, but it could be, I'm on my way to getting off sugar right or i'm on my way to healing my relationship with sugar or those sorts of language can be supportive as well so you you're not lying to your subconscious knows if you're totally outright lying to it so just make sure that it still resonates with you Does anybody want to share their new empowering belief if you have it ready? Or your first draft of it? I'll share first. So I went to, um, I guess the belief, the stress thing um, that I was talking about before, I kind of unraveled that a little bit and it's kind of coming down to like, I have a lot to do. And then what that is turned into, it's like, it feels like I need to finish everything and take care of everything. It's like this, I need to check everything off the to-do list. Like I believe that I have a lot to do. So it's like, I'm always, I always have to do something. I, ha I like, oh, I have a lot to do that. It's like a, it's like a compulsive feeling that I have. So um, I feel like it, I'm enough if I'm not doing, like it doesn't all have to get done right now. And that feels really yeah. like, oh my God, it doesn't have to, <laughs> you know, like it's just yeah. like, oh, that feels good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't have to do oh, it all right beautiful. now. Beautiful. No. Yeah. And you're enough even if you don't do anything. That That's the deep work, like yeah. you know, that I've personally been working on too. How can we be enough? I mean, that's a whole other conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Just being. Right? I think that's the like, that's the deep, deep version of that. I've been working yes. on that. Like if I just have a day where I don't accomplish anything or check anything off my list, like how can I still feel like enough just by mm -hmm. being, which by the way, we all are right. As soon as we're born onto this planet, into this reality, we're already enough. And then somehow somebody along the way tells us we're not right. And we have to do all these things conditionally to, to somehow get love and be enough, which is such BS, mm -hmm. right? If I don't know where everybody is in their belief systems and things, but you know, it's just, you know, we, we are perfect as we are. Right. And when we can uncover that more, it's, it's so beautiful and empowering. Danny, I, I, as you were just sharing that there may be, I, I could be off, but there may be some, another belief, like, obviously, as you start diving into this, you'll mm -hmm. see that there's like, oh, there's like five other. Yeah. Five there's other like a lot of them. This, right? mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like there's some big ones around time for you. Easy. Right. Like I don't have enough time to get everything done. There's not enough mm -hmm. time in the day. Yeah. So that, that was one that I really had to work a lot with myself. Cause I was the same as you, like yeah. there's, there's not enough time to do all the things and really changing that. A new one that I chose was I have more than enough time for everything that I need, mm -hmm. right. Or that needs to get done. There's yeah. always enough time, like sort of beliefs like that can be really, really um, obviously supportive. Cause there always is, there's always, things always get done. And if they don't, they weren't important. Right. And yeah. it's okay. Um, Being yeah. sick was actually a really good learning opportunity because I felt like yes. I have no time. I have no time. And then I was sick and yeah. couldn't do anything for four days. And I'm like, I guess yeah. I'm, I have time, <laughs> like I have time to do this. Yeah. So it like made me realize. So it was a good teacher. Yeah. Beautiful. And maybe your body is also like, Hey, practice just being yeah. instead of 
having to do, right? There's so many, so many gifts in being sick, I think. <laughs> like, <laughs> I always reflect on that too. I'm like, okay, what's my body teaching me right now? Oh, I need to slow down. I need to. Yeah. And that's just doing in this thing, course. Practice. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. what is our body teaching us? We all are here because we're not feeling our best. And what is this teaching you? Like being sick is such a good opportunity for reflection and that catalyst for change yeah. and causing you to ask for something different. So yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great yeah. Onward to you learning to slow down and meditate. Yes. <laughs> Trying to lead by example. <laughs> Does anyone else want to share their empowering belief? No, we've got a nice, beautiful, small group here. I want to hear both of you. I want to hear all of them. Also, no pressure. You don't have to share. <laughs> we'll move forward. Myra, um, what's your Yes. My new belief is that the universe is working in my favor and it wants to give me the life of my dreams. I totally and absolutely am created with everything I need within to do what will bring fulfillment. And as I was sitting here and thinking, I, I kind of went back to, I backpedaled a little bit maybe. And I was like, like, why do I not think that the world or the universe, whatever God would be in my favor? And it, I think it all comes back to not feeling worthy. Mm -hmm. So I get to explore that a little bit more and just dig deeper in that. Like, I mean, I did write down some things like where that belief did come from, but um, yeah, there's more coming to me. And I think it boils down a lot to just like, I don't deserve it or I'm not worthy of it. Yeah. So um, Absolutely. my last line that I wrote so far is I am worthy of health and happiness. Yay. Oh, so empowering. So that's my, chills, my belief. <laughs> yeah, it's so, so deep, good. it's so profound. And it's something that your words are so universal to, because I feel like so many of us can relate to what you're saying. And it's just such beautiful insight of like where it's going for you. It's just incredible. So I'm, thank you for sharing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, so good. And by the way, we're all worthy just because we're here, right? Yeah. Like that's that's a reminder too. Like, um, you know, the, the moment we're born, we're already worthy, right? Like it's it's people and situations that start to teach us we're not for some some sad reason, right? But it's all part of our journey, and it's okay. Um, and yeah, you're really you're really hitting on the, the some of the core ones, uh, which is so beautiful. And, and you'll be able to obviously keep keep flowing with what's coming up for you. You're, yeah. You know, you can obviously see this is just the gateway workshop for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the, and, and it's also a little scary because I feel like I can like think all these things and say all these things, but then like, and this isn't the first time I've done an exercise like this. And it's like, well, if I did that, you know, X amount of years ago, like, why am I still there? It's so easy to say the things or recognize them. But like you said, like the action, the action and moving forward and doing the actual changing is what can really scare the crap out of me. So, yeah. 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 And that's normal. Okay. I want to acknowledge that for all of you. That's really normal. Like what we're coming up against in our, our mind is like our ego, right? Our ego wants us to yes. say exactly where we are. Like, stop, yes. don't change anything. Cause that's not safe. Right. So there's this whole ego safety, you know, part of our brain. That's like, don't change the way you think don't change these things. Right. So it does take, you know, um, some commitment and some action, right? And we're going to actually talk about that. That's obviously, that's the last part of the workshop. Right. We're going to be talking about how, how to do that. And I'm going to give you guys some tips, but, um, you know, acknowledging that fear coming up for you is step one, right? Like I'm actually afraid to change this belief, right? And acknowledging that fear. So you can start to take away some of its power. Like it's, it's totally normal to, to feel that coming up. Um, it's all part of the process. So you're on the right track. <laughs> it's that whole fear of actually not following through once again like that's <laughs> right a, that's a, yeah pretty big for me but yeah what are you just out of curiosity I'm going to get in my coaching role here like what are you making that mean about yourself when Myra doesn't follow through with something she is well often I feel like I'm lazy you know I'm like well you know I'm lazy um is that what you're getting at like yeah I'm just curious like there might be some more um or there definitely is some more there for you like especially as you're talking around like when I don't follow through with things 
right? And I know, um, Raquel, you were talking about failure as well. Like there's this, this piece of like, when I don't do the things I say I'm going to do, or I don't follow through, or I fail at something, it's not that we're afraid of failure. It's what we're making it mean about ourselves. So for example, like if I don't follow through with something, it means that I'm like useless or worthless or unlovable, or like some of these really deep core beliefs. And that can sometimes just be really um, helpful and eye-opening and being like, okay, it's not actually that I feel like a failure. It's that I actually feel like a bad mom, or I feel like I'm a bad wife, or I feel like I'm, you know, there's, there's usually another kind of layer and you can keep just kind of being inquisitive with yourself around like, what's actually, what, what are, what's the rest of that story that I'm telling myself and what am I making it mean about myself as an individual? Cause often like we, then we start taking on that identity, right. Of, of like, I am a failure, right. Which is an identity that none of us should carry around. Like that's, that's not, you know, supportive. Right. So does that make sense? It does. I'm going to need to think about it a little bit. Definitely think but, about it. But it yes, does make this sense. Is a lot, but yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You have the recording. You can go back over this. <laughs> okay, Thank you. Let, let's move. Let's move on because this next this next one is really uh, really fun. Okay, really really. Next question. Next piece. You've got your new empowering belief. Now, what is going to be possible in your life when you believe this new belief? I want you to get like brainstorm happy. You know what is now like really imagining yourself operating and living from this new belief and what is going to change in your life what are you going to have more of what are you going to experience how are you going to feel what is what is going to be possible for you when you are operating from this new belief so i'll give you some time to really step into that that empowerment that joy that excitement of what's going to shift for you and i have the best song for this <laughs> what wow. looks like john ads ads <laughs> i'm not on my computer so i can't i don't have spotify open so i'm just using youtube <laughs> we'll get there here we go the broken down i'm tired of living life on the merry-go-round and you can't find a fighter but I see it in you, so we gon' walk it out. Move mountains. We gon' walk it out and move mountains. And I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day. Silence is a quiet, and it feels like it's getting hard to breathe. And I know you feel like dying, but I promise we would take the world to its feet. Move mountains, bring it to its feet. Move mountains.
we have each other and for that we have each other All right. How's that feeling? Some good things hopefully coming out like some some yeah, I can see your smiles. <laughs> it's good, right? Like tapping into honoring our emotions on that. Like this feels good, right? This this is the right fit for like all these amazing things that um, that are going to be possible for me, you know, going forward. So awesome. Okay, I want to move on because I want to be, um, you know, we'll wrap things up here soon. And again, you'll be able to go through this again and again and continue bringing things forth. So the last question, the last step is about making a commitment to yourself, okay? Making a commitment to yourself, to us, to this group, to, to, to everyone else in your group and everything that you're doing with Danny, you know, however you need to, to hold yourself accountable, but most importantly to yourself. And a commitment to how you're going to show up for yourself in not only remembering how important this new belief is for you, but making it stick. So I'm going to share with you some ideas, some resources, some things that may resonate with you. They may not. And um, anything else goes as well. But I just want to share with, with you some ideas, some suggestions around how to help make this new belief stick. So and then I'll give you a couple of minutes or as I'm talking, write down like the commitments that really resonate for you. What are some things that you're going to commit to doing for yourself? whether it's reviewing this workbook once a week, or um, that's an idea, right? Like, you know, keeping this top of mind and reminding yourself of not only the cost that that old belief is having, but also the possibility and this new belief and what it's gonna bring into your life, okay? So the, the biggest thing with beliefs and now recreating this new belief is as, as most of us know, repetition. Okay, when we're dealing with an old way of thinking or an old neural pathway, we really do have to, you know, rely on repetition to rebuild a new pathway, a new way of thinking. So there is going to be a level of commitment that each of you will have to make to build in some serious repetition on a daily basis of this new belief. Okay, one thing that you can do kind of on the other side of that with the old belief, and I, I know some of you were already mentioning this a little bit, is um, looking for proof that it's not true. That can be helpful as well. Like, you know, I think, um, I think it was you, Myra, that was doing that already. Like, these are, these are some reasons that I know that's not true, right? Like, the universe has been supporting me in these other ways, or, you know, looking for proof so that your brain can understand, wait, that is just a belief. It's not something that is true, right? So we can, we can kind of debunk it, look for proof in other areas of life, you know, where that's not always true. And then in terms of repetition, there's so many things you can do, right? And, and this is probably the best like action taking piece is not only committing to, to being repetitive with this new belief, but you can have things like sticky notes on your computer, on your bathroom mirror. You can write on your bathroom mirror. You can have a sticky note in the car. You can make this new belief like your backdrop on your phone or your computer. 
Um, you can also set this is this is a great hack as well, because the more you repeat and you remind yourself of this new belief, the quicker it'll stick, right? So if you're doing it once a day, it could take months to shift, right? Especially if this is a belief, especially, you know, a, a lot of us have been tapping into our beliefs around, um, you know, feeling worthy, feeling enough, failure, right? These are beliefs that most of us have carried around since childhood, right? So whether that's, you know, 20, 30, 40 years, 50 years, right? that's a lot of time that we've spent rewire or, you know, like solidifying that pathway, right? So when we think about it, the more we can repeat the new one, the better. So hopefully it's more than just once a day, but I mean, it's going to take you longer if that's all you're doing. So another great, uh, great idea too, for those who have their phone on them all the time is to set an alarm, right? You can set an alarm on your phone. Maybe it goes off like three times a day, or maybe it goes off every hour and it reminds you to hydrate and to remind yourself of your new belief, right? <laughs> like whatever that is. Um, but you can set those, those reminders. Another great tool to use, obviously, depending on how your brain works, and this might take some practice. I'm a very visual learner, so sticky notes work really well for me. But if you're an audi uh, audible learner, right, having something like even recording your own voice on a voice note and listening to that in the morning and before bed, um, right, first thing when you wake up in the morning and the last thing before bed are actually the best times because your brain is going to be more malleable, um, especially coming, you know, going into sleep and coming out of sleep. Um, those are really great times to plant that new belief. Um, so you could do that, record a voice note, listen to it a couple times a day. Um, like I said, you know, make it your screensaver on your phone and writing it as well. You know, that's, that's a really powerful way to solidify new things in our life is writing it down. So, um, you know, I know people um, who have, and I've done this actually in the past too, is that, you know, writing it down 30 times every morning, right? Like just writing down your new belief in a notebook 30 times, right? Like, cause there's, there's a link between our, obviously our eyes, a visual and our hand, you know, with the brain. So those are just some ideas in terms of um, repetition. Um, obviously there's a billion other cool ideas and I would love to hear what you guys come up with, but, you know, making some sort of commitment, whether it's just putting a sticky note in your mirror or setting an alarm on your phone, whatever that looks like for you, putting it on your fridge, you know, says stop new belief, <laughs> something, right. Get you out of the fridge or the cupboard or whatever, wherever your, your sneaky spot is, right. The drawer, the candy drawer. Um, those are great places to have those sticky notes, right. Um, a couple other things that I just wanted to share. Um, in terms of, you know, when I put this together, this, this workshop, thinking about like, what have I done personally? What are, what are some tools that I've used? Not only just around shifting like my beliefs, but just in general with a lot of this mindset stuff. Like it's, it's not just all about beliefs. There's a lot of like identity and values and learning to slow down and emotions. Like there's a lot of different uh, pieces of inner work that really are all tied together. So I just thought I would you know, share a short list with, with all of you of some of the things that I've done that if you're curious, you can look into research more and um, maybe try for yourself. So one thing that is really, really powerful, especially when we're, we're shifting beliefs um, is doing some sort of letting go ceremony. Um, I'm actually hosting this in one of my communities next week. No, on the full moon. So full moon time is the best time to host a, full, a letting go ceremony. I think it's in two weeks, something like that. <laughs> um, so just, you know, having some energy around like writing down all the things you're letting go of and all the limiting beliefs that you want to let go of, right? There might, there's probably multiple that you want to let go of and just being intentional with that. And then you can actually burn it safely, you know, safely or destroy it in some sort of really powerful way. But fire is actually a very, very powerful um, element to, to release and let go of things and actually like burn them away. Right. So you could also, you know, throw it in water or things like that, but um, just even just having that sort of practice. So that's one thing um, I already mentioned about like proving it's false. You know, that's kind of, for me, it was always a nice trick and reminding myself like, oh, okay. Like failure is, is, you know, not true that, you know, I'm, I'm useless if I fail. Like that was one of my beliefs, you know, that it was a bad thing to fail instead. Now it's, it's a great thing to fail. Like I, I love that now. Um, so proving that it's false for yourself, looking for, for examples meditation, Danny, you can be meditating your way into believing that you can meditate, right? <laughs> um, but meditation, right? St spending time in stillness, spending time just like, you know, a a alone with your mind. I know for a lot of people, that's really terrifying. Um, and, and it doesn't have to look any certain way, but it's been a really powerful tool for me. And just like being in my brain and being able to have that time and quiet time to repeat, right. And just in my mind, repeating my mantra, my, my new, uh, my new belief that I'm working on. Um, another thing that, that may be worth looking into as well is called theta healing. 
T H E T A. Um, it's an energy healing technique that actually taps into the root of like, it's very specific around beliefs, um, which is a really, really cool thing. I've done that a couple of times as well and found it really, really helpful. Obviously what you're doing with Danny, you know, coaching therapy, you know, talking it out with someone like those are really, really powerful tools as well. Um, depending on the way that you soak in information, um, EFT is obviously like, um, emotional freedom technique tapping do that right? module six. Yes. Okay. Awesome. There you go. You guys are set up already. That's so good. Um, when it comes to belief work uh, any other energy healing, I think it all helps. Like, even if it's not specific around, um, around beliefs, but things like Reiki or craniosacral therapy, or like there's left, right, and center. There's so many things. Dan, do emotion you know, code. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off. Sorry. The, the delay. I'm go always ahead. cutting people off. Um, do you know <laughs> NLP neuro linguistic programming? I want to learn more. You yeah, would that, really is love that a tool it. That, yeah, so it's a tool that helps um, to clear the subconscious belief. So um, we're actually having a workshop. You can come um, with uh, I would my love friend. To. Yeah, with my friend Sarah Beth Jackson. So you can experience it. Um, so that's a cool part of like this awareness stuff of like uncovering these beliefs is so valuable. And then um, being able to sort of clear some of these beliefs, NLP is, um, is one of the, like, it's a great tool, you know, just another tool in the toolbox, but it's really powerful because yeah. it works with subconscious beliefs. So it's really good at sort of reprogramming. So it feels like that's Amazing. a natural next progression for this. And it's like, yeah. that's going to be next week. So, <laughs> Hey, look how that oh, worked that's out. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I would love to join. That is, yeah. uh, NLP oh, of is course. something you that I haven't, haven't experienced. And uh, I heard I haven't either. things about it. So yeah. So many awesome Perfect. things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. We'll all learn together. Yeah. So there's, there's yeah. so many tools. So um, the last two things that I was going to mention is emotion code. Um, it's another type of energy healing um, that clears emotions stuck emotions, which is like, you know, deep emotional work, which, which is mm. so powerful. And then another one um, is breath work in general, but one that I, um, I practice myself regularly is called neurodynamic breath work. Um, there's actually a guy out of LA, he hosts them online. There's like hundreds of people on this breath work session. He does them like five or six times a week. He's got a schedule. Um, and it's really, really powerful, deep subconscious work. You actually drop into your subconscious. Sometimes, sometimes I just lay there and rest for a while and nothing happens, but sometimes I can drop in. So any of those things that you can use to really tap in, you know, to your subconscious or, uh, you know, do that healing work, obviously there's, there's lots of modalities to do that, but, you know, just staying open to all of these and open to possibilities and things that might show up and staying curious to things like NLP. What is this? Like, maybe I need mm -hmm. to try this, right. And EFT, right. Um, just staying open to all these things, you know, is, is I think just as we're shifting and, and growing and learning, uh, uh, you know, and changing the way we look and see the world, changing those glasses. Those are all really um, tools that, that I've, I've used anyway. And I'm sure there's probably other ones that I'm forgetting, but, <laughs> but those are just a few. So I would love to hear from all of you as we kind of bring things to a close, what are the commitments that you're making to yourself to repattern and rewire and repeat, you know, and build in this new belief? So my commitment um, is to set an alarm for myself to remind myself throughout the day because I am very prone to repeat that limiting belief over and over during the day, especially, you know, during work hours. So just setting up that alarm and that reminder, I think that would be very beneficial. And then also I agree with like writing things like several times, like repetition. Um, I, I think that's definitely a commitment that I'm going to make to myself um, that I would like to do. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. That's awesome. And you so see, you're, you're really acknowledging like what you need and, and um, what works for you. Right. I think, you know, a big part of this really is like being gentle with yourself, remembering like, this is a practice, right. You've been repeating these certain things for years, if not your whole life. Right. So being gentle with yourself. And when you notice like, I think like Lori was mentioning earlier before she jumped off, right. She's at the point now and you'll get to this point where you catch yourself. Right. And you might only catch yourself 
like once a day in the start. And then maybe you catch yourself six times a day and then you catch yourself every time you're saying it, right? And when you catch yourself, you can create the habit of immediately repeating the new belief, right? So you can, you know, continue building that, that, that awareness. And eventually you won't need the alarm. You'll be like, okay, I'm catching myself saying this negative old belief. Here's the new one. And then repeat it a couple of times or write it down a couple of times, you know, if that's coming up for you, but um, it really just, it, it, it takes time and practice like to even just being a, be able to call yourself out on it. Um, but that does come with the practice, which is right. it's a fun place to be, right? You're like, okay, now I get to call myself. Like when I noticed what, wait, it took me only a couple of days to realize like, Hey, there, there's this limiting belief. And, and every time it came up, I could, you know, tell myself that moving was fun right? <laughs> instead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks for sharing your commitments. Myra, what about you? What are your commitments? Um, I also um, am committed to like saying it out loud. Um, and I like, I like the idea that your brain is in a good space for that mornings and evenings as you come out of sleep and go into sleep. Um, so I'd like to, um, I commit to doing it mornings and evenings. Um, and I've also read like, your brain will believe whatever you tell it. So that's the importance of telling it over and over and over. Um, Basically, I guess, creating that new neuropath. Um, Side note, um, Dr. Caroline Leaf, I don't know if you've read any of her work. Um, Mm -hmm. She is uh, like a scientist. She studies the brain and she has all kinds of ways I think of like how to reprogram your brain, how to awesome. empty your brain of, you know, false beliefs and all that kind of thing. Um, so I, I haven't really, I haven't read any of her books, but I follow her on Facebook and um, awesome. I think her things are really powerful and it ties in with what you've been saying, um, like literally physically creating new paths in your brain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um I think it takes at least 21 days to build a new one. And somehow I don't think I ever have stayed consistent for that long. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, yeah, committed to, to doing that with, with the new belief. Amazing. That's so good. Amazing. Say that again, but like, believe it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I'm, I am committed to doing it morning and evening till I make a new path in my brain. I love <laughs> it. For at least 21 days, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. 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 And, and a reminder, actually, I do want to speak to that uh, a second. And then, Danny, I want to hear yours too. But um, that it, it really can take some serious time. Like, I know for me, like, my, my yes. beliefs around failure with myself it took me, like, a year to, like, actually feel empowered with, right? So, you know, it depends how deeply rooted they are, especially when we're dealing with the deep ones, like, you know, around failure, around our worth, around feeling enough, like those can take some serious time because they are very, very deep pathways. Right. So (laughs) don't beat yourself up. If after 21 days, you're like, well, this is still showing up for me. Right. It's okay. You're, you just stay, stay the course. Right. And, and continue, you know, on it'll one day you'll wake up and be like, oh man, like, now I love to fail and it feels amazing. Right? Like, you know, one day you're like, the universe loves me. Like you'll feel yes. that one day you'll just feel that switch, right? Like, oh my God, everything's working out for me. This is so cool. Especially with that one, like you're mentioning, you know, it really is like what we focus on, we bring about, right? So if you believe that the universe isn't showing up for you, you're constantly going to be seeing the universe not showing up for you. You're going to be looking for those exactly. examples, right? So if you start seeing the other way, other you can say, way. Well, where is the universe showing up for yeah. me, right? Like, you where, start to look, see it I have a roof over my head. Look, I've, I'm in Danny's program and this is incredible. And look, I have lights on in my house and food on my table. And like, you know, we can start to see the other side, right? It really is about yeah. like what we choose to see. We'll see, we'll see it. There's both, there's both pain and fear and nastiness in the world, but there's also a whole bunch of love and beauty. And so, yeah, we get to choose that. Right. And it's not always easy, but yeah. it's, it's right. right. Yeah. 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 Danny, what about you? Um, so your commitments. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things for me is that, um, if I'm going with the one about time and not doing and things like that, um, my belief is that there's always enough time and that also the, um, the rest and relaxation, it's a, super important because I don't always have to be doing something. And so, um, I'm going to schedule classes and fun things and relaxation because, 
um, there's always time. So if there's the belief that there's always time, if I put those things first, I'll get everything else done around that. And then the, the self-care piece of the meditation, um, I, I like to do, I like looking at things sort of checked off. So if I was going to print a like November 2021 calendar and every day, every morning I come and sit down to meditate, which I have been doing for the past few mornings. I'm so proud of myself. Um, but like putting that little, just like putting it right on the wall and putting a little, you know, X over the day, if I do it. And that's yeah. really motivating to, cause it, like, if I don't have an X on the day, it would bother me. So it's a sort of yeah. like get myself into doing it. And then, um, another thing that, um, was sparked when I was listening to Myra talk is I really love Abraham Hicks. I don't know if you've ever listened mm. to them, yeah. but yeah, but they talk about the law of attraction and, when we say a belief that you were talking about Dan before that if we say a belief that the mind is like you know let's say our belief is like I have am, am fat and unlovable then mm. I can't have the belief that I'm thin and sexy and totally lovable because my brain isn't there yet so Abraham yeah. Hicks recommends to go more neutral and so just go more general and sometimes those beliefs are really um they're really helpful and so she has um it's a she she channels these entities so I'm switching pronouns but um she talks about um, <clears throat> she'll say like, everything's always working out for me. There's the universe is filled with unlimited possibilities. And so sometimes some of these thoughts can help to get us out of that, like stuckness. Mm -hmm. And it just generally raises your vibration because you're like, wow, this, mm -hmm. it's like, I'm getting better. I'm learning more and more about myself every day. And so it's like, okay, you know, it's not like, sometimes we could get so stuck, like, I don't want to fail. I don't want to fail at this. I'm, you know, um, I don't want this to happen again, but it's like a failure. I talk about this all the time. It's, it's a learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. I have had so many quote yeah. failures, but I've learned so many things from all of them that they're not failures. I mean, relationships yeah. that I could say like, oh, I regret that, but I learned so much that I can't regret any of it. And it put me out at the right time to learn something new. So we're all in the right place at the right time, learning these lessons, everything is happening beautifully. And like, it's such a co-creation and we're inspiring yeah. others with our, you know, with our hard sadness and feelings. And yeah. it's just so beautiful. So, um, yeah. listening to Abraham Hicks that, um, if you go on YouTube and you click, uh, type in Abraham Hicks, like morning rampage, it's something really good to sort of get you in this general space of feeling good, feeling grateful, which is that, that space of gratitude, that vibration of feeling gratitude is so powerful because it makes us feel floating cat hair. Um, it makes us feel hope and it makes us feel, you know, just focus on the good things. Like, where is the universe showing up for me today? Like, look, like, Oh my goodness. You know, you really notice like the sun is shining, like, Oh, it feels so good. It's so, I'm so happy. And, and it's just over these simple things, because if we go into that nitty gritty, like nothing's ever perfect. And, you know, I'm a recovering perfectionist, so I could easily focus on what's missing or what's not done. And so it's a, you know, it, that's a really good thing for me to add to my morning routine as well. Is like after I meditate, yeah. listen to Abraham Hicks as I'm, you know, feeding yeah. the cats and making coffee. So <laughs> that's a really good one. I think I'm going to do that too because being in a space of gratitude just helps you yeah. feel <laughs> like helps all these Absolutely. things sink in. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need to create some sort of new saying. You know, wh what's the saying about like? you know, breakfast, start your day off with a like good breakfast or whatever. Yeah. It should be like, you know, start your day off with gratitude. Forget the breakfast. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Forget the wait, breakfast. Right? <laughs> breakfast can wait. Gratitude first. Gratitude yeah. for breakfast. There yeah. you go. Gratitude for saying. breakfast. Gratitude I for like breakfast. it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That'll set your blood sugar off for the day. And yes. your mental health, right? no, I don't know. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. So thanks good. for sharing all that, Danny. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of a, like a mantra that I always love to remember and just have like sticky notes. I don't at the moment because it's so ingrained in me now. It's like, I'm exactly where I need to be in this moment. Like mm -hmm. that was always one because I had that same energy around like rushing or needing to do all the things. And 
like, why aren't these certain things happening now when I want them now versus later? And like all those things, right? It's like, it always just brings me back to like, I'm on this path for a reason. I'm having this challenge or this struggle or this pain in my life for a reason. And it always like pans out that way. I'm like, oh, I needed that. Like I needed that pain. I'm grateful for that now, like after going through it. So that's always one that's so beautiful to remind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. So I wanna share a um, final uh, bonus question for all of you just to take away um, and then we'll wrap things up. And I'm, this has been so awesome. Hopefully, I know we've been way over 90 minutes, but <laughs> this is so good. I I'm, I'm really love having this conversation. So the last one, it's not on your workbook, but I really wanna you know, throw this out there for, for you guys. So write this down. Is it, what will be the ripple effect when you have this new belief? So this is really, really beautiful. So what is the ripple effect? Um, because most of us human beings want to impact the world in a great way, right? We want to impact others. We want to be a good mom. We want to be a good friend. We want to like show up and shine our light. So when we can also not just see the benefits for our own life, you know, with this new belief, like all the great things that we're going to be able to do and are going to shift and how we're going to feel, but how's it going to affect those around you, your family, your friends, the world, you know, is it going to allow you to finally write that book so that you can, you know, change the lives of millions, right? Like that was something that really was, was powerful for me. Obviously my passion and my purpose on this planet and this life is to impact other people's lives and really help people like not just with this conversation, but in so many other ways. So that was always, you know, really hit home for me when I was like, when I can get over my fear of failure, when I can get over all these other limiting beliefs, then I actually get to like leave a legacy, right? And really like help people out of the dark and into the light and all these amazing things that were my ripple effect. So we all have a ripple effect. I mean, we're, we're connected with everybody in our life, um, whether it's even just the people in our family or in our communities or at our church or at work, right? Like we, we really vibrationally affect everybody. So when you're operating from this new belief, like what is that ripple effect? How's it gonna affect the other people in your life? What's it gonna show them and prove to them that it's possible for them, right? Um, so many good things. So that's a, that's a takeaway one for, for all of you to sit with and obviously go through all of this again. Thank you so much for hanging out with me till the end. Uh, I know I shared a lot today and I'm just so grateful. Thank you so much, Danny, for having me in the group. This has been so fantastic. Hopefully it's been really supportive for all of you. And I love hearing your shares and your stories and your vulnerability and openness. And I'm really, really, really grateful for that and grateful for this community that you've created, Danny. So thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here, Dan. I appreciate so much you bringing this other side to, you know, I talk a lot about the nutrition in your body, but our mind is so, so important. And that's why I really wanted yeah. to bring you in because that's not my specialty. You know, um, I could, yeah. I benefit very much from <laughs> workshops like this. So thank you for sharing. And thank you, Myra and Raquel for being vulnerable and sharing and doing these work this work it's it's not easy and I love um by the way your shirt your sweatshirt Myra says just do it <laughs> and it's just like oh, so no appropriate <laughs> I'm like look at her taking yeah. action and having this like motto yeah. and yeah <laughs> I didn't even realize it yeah it's I so forgot cute. that's what it says that's so good so um yeah thank you all for being here and thanks Dan and um I'm excited to you know, continue our relationship together and sharing in mm -hmm. our communities and also to keep, you know, having experiences like this and, you know, taking action mm -hmm. and seeing the ripple effect it has on our lives and others. So yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you everyone for being here. Yeah. yeah. And um, Dan, where, where can everyone find you? Oh yeah. Right. Nowhere. I hide in the woods. Like, <laughs> you know, I am woods online. Right <laughs> I am some days I am on, I am away in the woods right now. It's glorious. Mm -hmm. Um, because taking time for myself is a very high priority that is important to me. Mm -hmm. Right. And I get to, be, I believe that and I honor that and I make time for that. Um, so you can find me online. Really. Uh, my website is Danielle Dame, D A E M.com. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Danielle Dame and Facebook is at Danielle Dame coaching. Those are probably the best places to find me. I also have a YouTube channel. I haven't posted a video in a little while, but uh, we'll get that up and going and um, soon. But yeah, those are kind of the places to come connect with me. I'm sure um, Danny can share the links with you as well. And yeah, I would love to stay connected. If you ever have any questions or uh, you know, want to share some successes or some ahas that you're having from this workshop, I would love to hear it. So send me a message and 
stay connected. Awesome. Cool. All right. Thank you Thank so you. much. This was exactly what I needed. So I'm Thanks. really excited. Yeah, you're Thanks exactly so where you need it to be today. <laughs> I am. Yeah. <laughs> Ira, I was really hoping that you. you would be here because you said at the beginning with the coaching, you said that it consistency is something that's difficult for you. And I had a feeling yeah. that came from a belief of like that comes with all these beliefs attached to it because we get to a point where it's like, oh, I can't be consistent with something. And it's like, oh, there's beliefs under that. So, and you're not the only one. So I'm really glad that you're here to experience it. And thank you so much, Raquel, yeah. for coming too. Thank you very much. This is great. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Thanks I'll for being care. here in whatever Yay. capacity you could. Yes. <laughs> and right, for all everyone. those watching the recording, take care. Have a good one.